I... Let's see if I can actually do this proper. Let's do this. Where's the share with sound option? 299 episodes. In my You're defense. Still just as good just at saying. getting In my defense, I have not I have not recorded but, a, Please. but like the last dozen of them. My defense, I have been fairly good. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and our ball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog league you run, SCCA or NASA, we don't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips and tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or lucky enough, and Chrissy gives us just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone reports the pattern. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. And I'm mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Welcome to a California Highway episode of our podcast. It is episode 299. What? Uh, California 299 is a major east-west corridor from the Arcata to Eureka area in Humboldt County on the Pacific Coast to the Nevada state line uh, east of the Alturas and connects Weaverville, Redding, Blue Lake, and Willow Creek. It is less than 300 miles and wholly located within the state. When California 299 reaches the Nevada border, it reverts to an unpaved road. Not driving on a scenic byway out west? Well, then check out your E10 bingo card. It also reverts into a dirt road. Awesome. What you working That's on? Welcome awesome. to Nevada. It's all dirt. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that little bit of west coast history mental tell us what you have been doing so i just got back from gingerman we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks but we'll also talk about the results and i just solidified my plans to travel to drum roll please alaska because i bought one of the last two what? remaining spots in the Alaska, I threw a rod in Alaska rally. I've okay. spent this week trying to fit. I, I just like the heck with it. I'm buying it. I want to do it. Okay. Uh, I don't have a partner. I didn't have a car, but I do have a car <laughs> coming up. So you're just going to have to watch, oh, uh, watch what happens with that. Some great gracious. folks in that part wow. of the country have offered to help me out. It's going to be fantastic. And then I spent last night recording with the garage heroes in training. They have uh, a couple of episodes coming out, uh, on their dominating with Dawson, I'll be on those. And I'll also be on uh, a series that they're doing about lemons judging. If you two have not oh. gotten an email yet already, expect that to come very soon. Oh, okay. Well, um, wow. I'm, I am, is so I'm much. fascinated by what Chris has uh, on his, what he's been it, working on. It's, it's exactly what it sounds like. Here's yeah. what I've been working on all kinds of things and almost nothing. Because we have been traveling essentially nonstop for the last month. All it's of us travel, travel, right? Travel, yeah. yes. Uh, what's pack, travel, come home, Un recover, unpack, laundry, unpack, right? <laughs> Repeat. Go to work a little bit. Repeat. Still very fairly behind every time we get to work, and then we're like, "Yeah, yeah I got to go again." Sorry. Yep. See ya. Yeah. Struggle is uh, real. Yeah, in the, in that time frame, I don't remember what I even last talked about on the show. Like we were, we hadn't gone to New Jersey yet, so I was still prepping the car for Jersey. I think, or it was no, I was it was done. I was putting it, just put in the trailer. I think that's where we were. I think so. So um, yeah, and since then the Mazda is still in the trailer. I haven't even bothered to take it out of the trailer yet. Nope. Um, and I have what else have I done? Well, I washed the NSX one day, and I. Uh, I fixed the beach cart fixed after the, the wheel cart. You absolutely tore did. off that the wheel mount tore off that. I, I just said, let's get that done. So I, I reinforced that quite significantly. Uh, well, like for example, where the, the tube that holds the wheel, I previously had just kind of butt welded it onto part of the frame of the cart. I actually cut a hole in the frame and sunk it down in and then welded it that way and then put on a big brace in the front and then these big triangle plates on the sides that are well, well, it's anyway, uh, it's, it is notably stronger now. <clears throat> I also took one of the drive pins out of one of the wheels on the back so that it is now one wheel drive, but it turns really nicely now where before it didn't turn at all, at all. Locked if had more traction than we inspected. So um, I think that's it. I have to go get the Corvette. 
so I can actually clean it up and put it for sale. I think we're going to do that tomorrow or Thursday. So if you want to then I have to actually look at the boat. Disco vet with Providence, stay to our, yeah. stay tuned to our social media. Yeah. So next, next week I'll be talking about getting the disco vet out, getting the boat out of storage, you know, cause it's almost July and, uh, Yep. Time. So I'm just going to go with ditto on that because we did all the same traveling. We did all the same. So maybe while he was welding a little bit, I was running around here just trying to make us food. And uh, and we had Jersey in between there. So we had plenty of packing and then unpacking and house is a mess. We started cleaning actually because it's been like three or four weeks since we've actually like touched anything in the house. So it's been a lot, um, but we are home now for a while. So that's great. Uh, only a little bit of travel and only a little bit on the schedule. So all good. So I wanted to give a sorry for the, hi the hiatus. And we wanted to thank you for all of the love to the listeners that said that they missed our voices uh, on both coasts, on everywhere that we've been all over. Um, we definitely saw lots of friends uh, when we were in Colorado, which we'll talk about. Uh, New Jersey, people were saying that they missed us. So thank you. We've missed you. Uh, hopefully we won't have to do that again for a while. We are back in an action. And uh, thanks for bearing with us. We appreciate I, okay, it. Okay, since you guys are getting a we missed you, I'm getting a what's the matter with you, you lazy clowns. Well, Holy crap. You, you know, I'm getting texts from Bill. Good God. Generalizing the comments that we got all over the country, um, just about all of the occasional hiatus it was weird for us too because we just didn't like not having a show but we uh occasionally like the little bit of extra time especially when we were had one night at home we can maybe one i think one time we had two nights at home and we were yeah. like can't can't swing a show with all of this going on so we didn't here we vacuum are. for a month so <laughs> that's how busy it's been there's that wow. uh let's move yeah let's move on news and now it's time let's do it all right while we were all in Colorado, America was in France. And if you've seen all the memes and the footage of the Garage 56 Camaro entry, and if you have it, you're missing out. And I am going to just briefly share this one because this was my favorite of uh, the photos that came out of this. And it's going to take a few seconds. But what this is, is the Garage 56 entry sitting there in a field with all of the other <laughs> LMPs. That's not photoshopped. It looks like an SUV just lurking That's over every awesome. other race car. <laughs> I have not seen this picture. Uh, Holy crap. How can people see this? If you're listening on oh, it's what racefans.net, I would just Google it. It's amazing. Yes. Just literally type type NASCAR at Le Mans. This is like it the third picture like that'll come pretend up. Pretend cars, like like you're looking at them like on the floor and yeah. they're all just like miniature and Oh, wow. You know, the other yes. time you remember is those jokes about how the BMW M8 and IMSA looked really huge compared to everything. So they'd like put really big versions of it. So you'd, yes. That's what this legitimately looks like without being changed. Yeah. No, that that is a that is an unaltered photo. And uh, oh, the other wow. one I, I, I love loved is um, uh, the Apex adjacent guys were talking about how uh, initially the flaggers expected this thing to be so slow on the corners that they were yep. prepared to wave a white flag. And what they found out is it's faster in the corners than the LMPE cars. Uh, yep. And then a couple of them, it could run down. And I That's loved, amazing. there's a YouTube video. Um, uh, Jordan Taylor was great about posting this thing, but this thing on the Mousselon straight at night with headlights. And it is just this deep bass freedom bald eagle sound of a v8 at full song <laughs> charging wow. into the night and there's this little tiny wec car ahead of it and it's just i'm coming for you like an orca <laughs> on a baby seal it was awesome <laughs> if you oh, haven't figured great. out we're very excited about this and this is the gift that keeps on giving because one of those drivers jensen button formula one champion is now ready to return to racing full time Charles Bradley at motorsports.com reports that just ahead of next month's Chicago NASCAR street race. Jensen has spoke that he is looking at the world endurance championship or something with IMSA sports car championship button himself added quote. I don't think that I want, I didn't think that I would want to do a full season again because of how busy the schedule is, but I feel that I'll be racing in something next year doing the full season. So when, when, that's awesome. You okay? Yeah. Sorry. Don't okay. breathe water. Uh, <laughs> doesn't work very well. 
anyway, we promised updates as the whole story with the Massachusetts right to repair law progressed. And here's another. Brandon Gilligy at Haggerty is reporting that the NHTSA is telling U.S. automakers not to comply with the law in Massachusetts. Reuters added that NHTSA is concerned that, quote, open access to vehicle manufacturers' telematic offerings with the ability to remotely send commands allows for manipulation of such systems on a vehicle, including safety critical functions such as steering, acceleration, and braking, end quote. Meanwhile, Ford, GM, VW, Honda, Toyota, Hyundai, and other manufacturers filed suit in the U.S. District Court for the District of Massachusetts to block the law. More as it develops. Mm. Just want to fix stuff. Come on. (sighs) Okay. From our fifth host, Eric Rude, Nelson's Ledges runs an endurance race once a year to keep its overnight permit. With no one to register, they gave it to the SECA, who hasn't been aggressive in pushing Enduros in this region. Want to guess who's here to save the day? Yeah, it's a bare minimum for an overnight race uh, just going until 1 a.m. They have 19 cars registered. Of those 19, five are Lemons cars, another five are Champ champ cars. A Mazda 3 Mustang, a Mercur, duh, because it's a Lemons car. Uh, a Rabbit, a Boring E46, and uh, which are all Lemons veterans. Good luck to Crap Can Racers represent. Nelson yeah. Mm. Get some. I hope so hard that one of them one of the lemons cars wins and that's that's not a fool's errand those is those are some good teams they could do and, it and if that's if they want to say that they're right they have won the only overnight uh nelson's ledges race then there's probably some um some effort there i'm sure somebody's gonna put in the effort to win Okay, so I was looking around racingjunk.com just for fun things to look at and buy, and I found this awesome Airstream trailer, but uh, it was early access only. Uh, And I, if only I had early access, or I knew someone that had it so they could look it up for me and get me more information, I did not have my early access um, available, and you you can do that too. We do have early access. We have an E1R account. That's the joke. <laughs> I I knew I had one. I don't know our login, which means that I don't have one and I should have one. So uh, you can have one if you go use co- code pod 23 and get a racing junk pro membership, which includes early access. I There's plenty of things out there. They sit right at the top. So I was like, oh, what is that? I want to click on it. And I'm like, early. it says, do you want early access? And I was like, I do, but I don't know how to get into it so uh you have there's all kinds of fun things if you use code pod code pod not code pod code pod 23 Uh, (laughs) i was really hoping you actually had the link in there because now i gotta go on racingjunk.com and i gotta find this awesome airstream Uh, so also i'm gonna throw this out there uh we are headed to the pittsburgh vintage grand prix you need to subscribe to the YouTube. You have to. Uh, they will not spam you. You will get to see cool things. We were just talking about us doing all of the all of the awesome things that we're going to be able to do and see and talk about. You're going to want to see it because we will be on there. So go to Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. Look it up. They need a thousand subscribers. I think they weren't up. They may be in the like 500, 600. I haven't looked lately, but uh, they we still have another month, so you have time. But go there now while you're thinking of it. Uh, if you have friends, log on to their YouTube and make sure you subscribe. You get that spam email address. Set up a YouTube account because it's all owned by Google anyway. Subscribe. If you're and sick nobody... of us, then feel free to uh, watch the other videos that they have on there with not mm. us. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yes, that's true. And you'll yeah. uh, you'll see so much. Uh, we're very excited. We just we're just talking about it. So uh, more to come on that because maybe we'll have a preview. Okay, moving right along. Upcoming racing as champ is at CMP. There will be thirty six cars, thirty six cars on Crickets. champs uh, on CMP. Thirty six. Cricket. Goodness gracious! Cricket. They have a lot of crickets. They're in the middle oh, of nowhere. They do. Now. They have crickets. They have they have poisonous snakes. They have. Uh, fire fire ants fire uh, ants. sounds like a great time okay they have 10 bmws kind of not really boring, boring. seven, Mi- yeah, seven yeah. miatas one honda which is a prelude zero porsches and a dodge stratus a volvo c30 and an sc 300 f and a whole bunch of other boring cars and i've raced with the builder of that dodge stratus it is oh. quick well good i hope they win 
Bye. I'm just happy that someone's racing a Dodge Stratus. Like <laughs> we all are really. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Racing results. Uh, I, I'm told. NJMP. I told at CMP it was just a city boy. It it Don't. was. <laughs> yep. Don't. No, no, no. <laughs> hey. Just stop singing it. The wheel of the show keeps on turning. No, here. it doesn't. So, at, uh, we were at NJMP. Faithfully. <laughs> it does keep faithfully keep turning. Stop. Okay. As long as you don't stop believing mental. That's the really important oh. part. Of it. Okay, um, keep going. Yeah. So we're going to talk about our experience at this fantastic nice. race uh on an Later. upcoming show um but right now we'll at least get bringing the results overall class a win towley went to towley yep yay, yay. Uh, uh class b went to radley baby what now called sisyphean amc okay phil ellinger all right great uh that's the amc hornet this thing was in the top five for most of the weekend in an amc hornet mm-hmm. awesome I, I heard a, I heard a rumor Mike Carr even showed up. He, he did. did. Yeah, we saw yep. him. Um, for, a, for a while, the top three contained an AMC Hornet and a Dodge Aspen, and that's overall. That is that's, fantastic. Um, but the Hornet's been racing. coming around since Monticello. So it's not like they don't have this very sorted. Oh, uh, Maya, Monticello I, was basically stock in brown and rolling under its door handles. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Since then. But that's what I mean. Like that was like <laughs> in what, I don't know, 13, 14? Long, yeah. Yeah, like very, well, very long time ago. Maybe even Plus Phil's that. a very good driver. Correct. And the other guy too. I forget the other guy's name. Me too. Anyway. Um, class C, Sesame Street Outlaws. This is Manny's team with the Saturns. This is the slowest one, the gray one, the Saturn SL. Not SL1, not SL2. SL base model. Um, that's basically all the rookies that they mm-hmm. tossed in that thing, and the damn thing just kept going all weekend. That's so good well, and I would they probably all listened to Manny when they did their pit stops too. That guy's fantastic. Yep. The other two cars broke. Like one of them, you know, spun a rod and something else, but this one just kept turning. <laughs> you know, when he walks over and I was like, How are things going? He was like, Do you have an engine hoist? And I was like, Oh, oh no. Well, you Sorry, just Manny. that's the sad game is when you're uh-huh. looking for an engine hoist. So yep. so the theme for their that Saturn SL for the next one, they just start calling that car the wheel in the sky. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure absolutely. Because it just keeps turning. Sure. Uh heroic fix was a team called pimp my ride they had a celica that had an incredible body kit they were doing a motor swap in the garage like all weekend i don't know why it, took them, <laughs> it was the whole weekend and i think they got out for the uh like the last half hour of the race laps, after yeah. doing the whole weekend anyway uh, judge's choice valve tap racing jim and family they because you know we you know what they have one cordoba you know what's better Hello. two cordobas so they brought mm. two Chrysler Cordobas. And of course, Eric had that be the very start of the race is was the two Cordobas. Yeah. Yeah. And one of them yeah. they're actually pushing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Road Mangler, the wife said I could Lexus ES 300. Good for that, them. I remember that one. That was the tiger striped one last year oh, that like she just, spent yeah, all weekend yeah. wrenching. Yep. Yeah. The, they actually crashed into Tom Lamino pretty hard right in front of me because he was going through the corner and spiked the brakes, locked up those Yokohama tires and slid sideways right into Tom, who was mm-hmm. at the edge of the track. Kind of a shame. I did hear the, to their credit though, they tried to, uh, Oh, they were very they, nice about it. They, they, they tried bad. to like they buy Tom's car and pay yeah. for everything. Oh yeah. So. They're very nice about it. I just felt bad that they're, they're apparently those Yokohama tires didn't do so hot to get them around that corner. They stop, apparently. Those Yokohamas uh, are great tires, but they're not miracles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they won't fix that much bad driving. I Pretty got screwed. Much. I don't even know really the story here. Hyper Wiper and the Hemi Framus Synergies. It's a Porsche 920 something. It didn't work. Uh-uh. Uh, all, it, <laughs> right. Everyone, everyone understands. Everyone's like, yeah, okay. That's about right. right. <laughs> uh, regional living in a van down by the racetrack. That's Zach and the fools who buy seats with him in the Van and Ball Dodge Caravan. The worst part of that uh, as I understand it, is Eric offered him that was the uh, free entry into Gingerman because he yep. won the regional Correct. on that one. Uh, Correct. So I got so I got to see him last week. <laughs> yeah, Zach stayed at our house Sunday night after the race. Oh, that <laughs> is awesome. Yep. He didn't tell me that. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He left one Nomex sock and some change. So oh well. 
and he took one of our dryer balls. Just he saying. did. Yeah. That's okay. Because we thought doing laundry oh, would be about the greatest like, thing in the world for him. Yep. Yeah. So Zach. <laughs> yep. Totally. All right. Uh, org choice. The his, the illustrious tuna chuckers in their Volvo Amazon. They had a, a Swedish police costume thing going all weekend that they 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 kept up all weekend, which is nicely. They even changed their engine Sunday afternoon, and went to go get back on track as the checker flew. Oh, oh. Wah, wah. sad. IOE, the British Empire strikes back in a Sunbeam Alpine. Now, Ooh. we've all seen this Alpine fail to barely make it around the track ever before. It just kept driving all weekend. It was awesome. And Wheels they, they wobbling. Did, they did just, pretty well. And they stayed they out did. of the way. They, yep. yeah. And they weren't like too, they weren't like so, so, so slow. They were slow, <laughs> but you get around them and they're so small too. Mm -hmm. that did, that did. Yeah, it helps that it's a very small. It's very slow IOE car. It's easy to get around. Sure. Uh, Halloween meets gasoline went to Garage Heroes and Monkey House combined for their uh, very committed dodgeball theme that they had all weekend. So and, great and, job. And the level of, of commitment they had to have to outdo the other teams for that. Yeah. Like us. Solid. Well, when yeah, several, exactly. several large, everyone around dodgeball games started to happen, like in, you know, BS when healing the staff is helping is just throwing dodgeballs anyone around is throwing dodge, everyone yeah things after like that. dinner all the whole <laughs> yeah. all of and, the judges and, and the whole every garage one of a became... certain everyone of a certain age has a certain level of ptsd with the sound of a rubber ball bouncing off of a head that kind of metallic ting sound and <laughs> instantly we're all back in grade school and crying a little bit yeah pretty much timber went on facebook and bought a box of assorted wrenches to throw at people <laughs> when it was safe to do so because or they throw, they yeah. threw they had foam, uh, ones too. foam ones, they dropped the, the metal ones. So it made the clang sound. Yes, that's happened. That happened. Uh, they did a great job and they're the first time that they've won. So they were very happy. So all, all uh, good for them. I was talking with the, the Fishers and the, they were saying um, the Jesse Combs foundation car had a mechanical and they were off the track. So they yes. were throwing them in their car and then yes. had to kind of coach them a little bit about yes. this is how you endurance race. Oh uh, yes. They were <laughs> some of them were going straight down the middle of the track on the I so line. I called uh, I called slowly. in I called in and said you we got a black fella like them. I yeah. I'm sorry. It's wonderful. I love Jesse Combs. I mean like I'm all about trying to make this happen. But putting them in a race car on a race day and not on a Sunday when everyone else is racing going. in New Jersey, like, racing yeah, yeah. Uh, for the hundred not, other cars, not a great idea. And it would have been awful, just like Lomino's car for them, somebody to crash in, crash into them thinking you are a normal race, race car Honda that goes normal speeds and you're driving in the middle of the track going 10 miles an hour. Yeah. Not okay. Instead, Alan was the only one that crashed it. So true. <laughs> not normal. Right. And that's okay because he works on the car. If you yep. just arrive and drive on well, people. It's not his fault. He saw a squirrel and he turned and he didn't do anything about it. So, but he. Oh, well, epic. Anyway. <laughs> Matt, you were at Gingerman. What happened to Gingerman? We were at Gingerman. It was a fantastic time. I was there with the infamous Randy Bish and Shelly's House of Speed, AKA Tammy from that CMP race eons ago. Uh, what a great time. It, it was rather like our ride in the Mustang. My stomach hurt by the end of the day, every day. So much fun. Uh, but your winner uh, of Index of Affluency was Wisconsin Crap Racing. Now, in addition to the regular car, they brought a Suzuki Kagashi. And if you're wondering what the hell a Suzuki Kagashi is, it was a sedan Suzuki made uh, towards the end of their presence as an automobile dealer. And Eric, because he's Eric Rude, sent us this data. Uh they only sold 3,379 of those things from 2009 to 2015. And of those, and by the way, this is globally, of those, a quarter of those were acquired by the Japanese National Police Agency. So uh, this is a, a, a terrible, terrible car. <laughs> uh, CVT transmission. And we were all predicting the transmission would blow up. And uh, one of the guys came by and said, you're wrong. The transmission's doing just fine. The engine's sitting at 6,000 RPMs everywhere because the transmission won't adjust. So the engine's always having to redline. Oh, no. But it just kept going. 
They wow. took it in on a trade for, they gave a hundred dollars for it. Um, the hood was smashed up and they couldn't find a new hood. So they just bolted it down. This was a, a wonderfully terrible car that they drove very clean all weekend. Our Halloween meets gasoline trophy was here for the beer motorsports in a mini Cooper, their theme, because it was father's day weekend. They were all dads. So they all had their NASCAR shirts on. They all had fanny packs. One guy had an oh. itemized list of everything in his fanny pack. Uh, they had, of course, the new balances of the socks, and they rode around the pits in a John Deere mower. They never came out of character at midnight on Saturday night. People are, uh, Randy Bish and his crew are doing what Randy Bish and the LOL and B always do. And they're, they're a little, uh, altered and, uh, they're like, Hey, sport, you call me when you get home. All right. Keep it between the ditches. They just, they never stopped. So, so much so. On Sunday, we had them in the penalty box for any time somebody went four off, they would get a lecture about how hard they worked on the lawn. EB Motors' heroic <laughs> fix was the legendary Acura legend. You'll appreciate this, Chris. A one-year-only axle on this car oh, no. went off. They, they had to go to Gary, Indiana. And if you don't know why that's a problem, go to YouTube and type in Gary, Indiana, and look at the hundreds of videos of people that are saying, what a crap hole Gary, Indiana is. And they, uh, the uh, voicemail they got when they were trying to find this axle was a guy going, uh, look, man, there's, there's this yard, okay? The guy's going to tell you he doesn't have one, but he does. It's back there in the third row. And then nothing, just static. They, they don't they don't even know what happened. The guy left them the voicemail. I got screwed was glacial pace racing in an Audi A4 because Audi A4 and they have four of them, three of them with the V8s. Yeah. Uh, Yokohama Road Manor Cup Global Cooling and a Subaru Impreza judge's choice was disc racing in a Ford Taurus. They showed up in Scottish outfits. They had a kilt on their car. They wore kilts all weekend and they had a pneumatic compressor powered a robot bagpipe hanging out the rear window that they could control oh. with a uh, Raspberry Pi touchscreen on their dash. It's terrible. Glorious. They made haggis for the potluck. And I got to tell you, I tried it and turns out it was really good. Uh, so, you know, uh, of course, again, the organizer's choice, the van and ball. <laughs> Uh, yep. He used up all of his brakes and then had to like park the car because he needed a set of brakes to get home. So they, they kept it. And they took it out of the checker. Um, the regional award of you came to the right wrong convention was marriage counseling in a Toyota matrix. They were all dressed up as different anime people. They had done some racing, but they'd never done lemons and they were committed and they were all in these very elaborate anime costumes during a very hot weekend at Gingerman. Uh, but they stayed on it. Class C was home fail motorsport and a Ford friggin' Ranger. So it turns out when Tyler Stank's not there, yeah, that's right. I said that, Tyler. They can win. So uh, oh. Class B oh. was Focus Club and a Ford Focus. And overall was the infamous 750 flying pigs and that giant pink Mustang to wrap up an all blue oval podium. Wow. Across the board. Great weekend racing out there. Typical Midwestern type deal. We didn't have a single team get a third black flag on Sunday. Wow. Why they didn't even need you there, basically, is what you're telling me. <laughs> yeah. Between Aaron gathering yeah. uh media for everything, yeah. We just me, me, Randy, and Shelly just sat around and told bad jokes. Sounds like a great time. Which we could yep. say the same about our judging experience. <laughs> anyway. Let's get feedback time on the gram. Nathan N said, y'all did a great job judging last weekend and it was good to see mantle in one piece. And also good to see his recent Monaco expedition to, uh, to F1 and their antics. They haven't eroded away his lemonitism. And he added that John, John Denver is full of shit, man. Uh, we'll have to get to that. Don't and, uh, that. and just to, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about New Jersey and we're going to be talking about Gingerman and all that kind of stuff, but we're also going to be talking about Monaco and the two of you were uh, in canada eh? so yeah we oui. talk about montreal oui. it's quebec oui. it's different oui. there's no a Sacre bleu. that's right yeah. Yeah. see there you go we oui. all right also on the gram our buddies apex adjacent had a great team idea seeing a picture of me randy and shelly with uh, <laughs> our, our our hair done up properly credit to aaron cole for that artsy shot quote can we start a great 
Uh, can we start a good hair lemons team? We could get a four door and have the theme Vidal saloon. This is a brilliant idea. We're going to talk Ian. This is going to happen. I love it. <laughs> has to be a Euro car of some sort too. Mm, mm, it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, on the YouTube, uh, we got who, oh, who said this? Uh, damn it. I, I took the name. Whoever this is. Great job. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Thanks. For glad y'all had a good time in Denver. Looking forward to hearing more about it. I also want to hear more about the development of the new civic, which previously sounded promising. The RX seven sounds more involved prep wise. Anyway, I followed the Pittsburgh grand Prix on YouTube. It was still 400. Some after listening to the latest garage heroes and training podcast, I finally bought hoopties, which I Yay. thoroughly enjoyed. So glad that Jeff played such a prominent role in it. I've been going through Jeff withdrawal. Hope he's well. And we'll be at Jersey with a 3 PM crew. Well, I can oh. tell you more about the development of the new civic civic is done except for a cage and a fire bottle. And it's been that way for like a year. We just don't need it right now. We have the miles that we're trying to win B and we, Chrissy and I are not going to bring two race cars for two of us. We know nope. that nope. nope. uh, eventually the civic will get that cage. Yeah. We, we talked to Jeff. We just talked to Jeff, uh, not too long ago. He's still crazy busy like an hour. Yeah. 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 He, in fact, he was on his way to something else. He, he, he's, he's looking, he misses all of y'all as well. All right. I gotta, I'm, I'm trying to, while I'm talking, I'm trying to bring up the uh, YouTube channel and find out who made that comment. Cause I'm pretty sure it's one of our regulars. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Anyway, we'll catch it later. <clears throat> yeah. The RX seven is more involved prep why because that is getting the motor swap done uh, where the civic is done. And we actually, we drove it on track <laughs> last summer at a grid life. We had mm -hmm. it out. The only problem is it was running a little hot, but it was a really hot weekend. So the oil temps were hot. That's kind of expected. Um, Yeah. So there we go. All right. That's all. Do you know who we're going to invite onto our great hair Vidal Sassoon team? Oh, uh, it was that. Ashley Doyle. Ashley Doyle was the one that told you about the. Oh. Uh, oh, thanks, Ashley. Thanks. I knew it was one of our regulars. Uh, so one you're not inviting fun. Jeff on your Vidal Sassoon team. That's for no, sure. no, no, no. We're, we're, this is a, this is a, yeah, the Vidal Saloon team, only good hair. So naturally, we're going to have Chrissy's mom. Hi, mom. My sister has some nice hair too. Very Your nice. sister does Co have some nice hair. Cookies mm -hmm. lead to a uh, good uh, shiny hair. <laughs> or something. Oh, you gave the away my vibing. secret. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> no. Sorry, Although I make Michael. no guarantees for the amount of cookies that I gave away in New Jersey that it was going to give all of them good hair. Cause I don't know that that's going to happen. So they are not magic, even though they taste like magic, they don't, your hair so don't like, uh, Dr. McGillicuddy's all-purpose self good We're for what ails you <laughs> and God. grows your hair just have a cookie and call me in the morning and do you have too much blood and <laughs> 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 Eat some leeches uh, okay it's main topic time it is main topic time let's do uh, it so folks there are any number of tracks that lemons goes to that are quite honestly in the middle of nowhere CMP, Gingerman. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones. Uh, Button Willow is kind of the middle of nowhere. Yeah, uh, what what are the tracks? Chuck Hallett, Hallett's middle of nowhere. Chuckwell. Chuckwell was definitely, Chuck definitely in the middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, High Plains Raceway, you start in the middle of nowhere, and then you're going to drive for 40 minutes. Uh-huh. Pretty much. Yeah, because it's east of nowhere. Yes. Well, but, Denver, start there. And then no, don't even get yeah. well. Yeah, it's an hour. No, we'll start out of there. No, no, no. Yeah. I meant like you have to get there, and then yeah, you just right. keep going. Is what you yeah. like? Go for, the far way hour, away. From, yeah. For but, being an hour from one of the largest airports in the country, it is amazing how nothing <laughs> there is near each. So HDR. at one point, three of us. So uh, th we went together with uh, Craigers from uh, CMP, our friends down there. Uh, he was helping us judge. So the three of us carpooled often. So we went, uh, and so Chris was like. So we keep driving and there's a hill and there's a lot of grassy land. There's some cows, there's some bison. And, and we say, you know, like, wow, we've been on this road for a while. And Chris is like, it's, it's definitely right over that hill. So we wait, we get over the hill. Definitely not over that hill. Well, we went and, up and then it was kind of a mesa. Well, we so didn't get there yet. By the I'm time pretty sure you got over mm -hmm. the hill mm -mm. we were there but no we had to spend the, some time in the and we were like first. but i'm pretty sure like that hill might be it and then and these are just they're like 
rolling hills, right? Like we're not in the mountains at all. It's just, it is just literally going up and over a hill uh, just to give you the idea of what's out there. But um, there was like a broken down gas station. We saw lots of cows. We saw a shooting range. There's a shooting range right across the street, literally in the freaking middle of nowhere. No, it's, it, again, yep. no, the town where the hotel was the middle of friggin' nowhere. Sure. And then it's 40 minutes down the road. Uh, true. <laughs> oh, not with the, not with our car, the way we go. But, oh well. So uh, it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah. The accommodations are sparse, like water. They have to truck in the water. At so the track. at yes. the track, right. Yes. So uh, there are no, there are no bathrooms. Showers. Uh, they, they did. Have, so they had they a shower trailer in. and a bathroom trailer. Sure. Don't say there's no bathrooms, and they have and this is... an abundant number of porta potties, but they're permanent porta potties, <laughs> and which is even worse. About the, right, here's the thing about the permanent porta potties: they all have a latch on the outside. Ask Chris so, how he knows. Guess what your friends do when you go into said porta potty? Legit, and then you walk <laughs> away, and you oh, tell them they're not going to be back later because that that's definitely awful. happened. We only did it once. I didn't go in. <laughs> but now this should not reflect in. on the this should not reflect on the track staff because the track staff. Oh we, oh, we haven't gotten there yet. That's a yeah, okay. Issue. All right, we're just talking the facility. The yeah. and it, it, it's a track that has it's fairly recently built. They're gradually improving it as they have the money. It's a nonprofit track owned by the local car clubs. They have put their money into the technology around the track. They don't need flaggers everywhere because they have cameras and electronic LED flag light stations Amazing. all over the track. And mm -hmm. uh, we needed to use the cameras at least once. So that was really interesting. We can get there later, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, it's an interesting concept. Yeah, but Glenn who runs the track, runs a very tight ship. He does a good, he does a nice job with it. Everyone compliments how well it's run and it's like everything the, the, the track didn't delay us in any way no. over the weekend and they all. love lemons glenn especially yeah yeah he's a big fan and yeah. he sings the national anthem personally sing. every morning yep yep yeah no it was it was a lot he's on his four-wheeler with his big cowboy hat and boots and happy to be there so i was of the weather yeah i was actually on the track when the truck landed on its side no one year he, he's on his side. He's still safe. Uh, and I think the first person to get there was Glenn on the four wheeler. And he was, yeah, that was first responder level top notch. Made me feel safe. <laughs> good. Kind of you a deal. Your, you didn't roll your car. So that's good. No, I did. I did not. Um, so if you find yourself interested in HBR and you should be, it's a great track. You're going to either stay in Lyman or Denver and drive about 45 minutes to an hour, or you're going to need to find an RV or just get comfortable being wet. Yep. Because it rained. Yeah. So we stayed it at did. the, uh, the budget host Longhorn motel, which is the nearest accommodations only. to the track. It's, yeah, it's well, the, only accommodations. The only one at that track. exit. It's um, named appropriately. The uh, the the rooms that were not taken up by the lemon staff were uh, rented by the inglorious bastards. So I also was staying there. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a uh, budget. Uh, it, the, was, it was clean. The, it was it was, but mm -hmm. it was like it's a seedy hotel um, decor. So uh, but it was clean and everything worked. So whatever. That's it was barely, a place to we sleep. Barely, we barely stayed there anyway, especially since we were on a different time zone. We we're just like, whatever. Uh, yeah. But the uh, taco place, Mexican food place out front, top notch, yeah. delicious. Surprisingly, highly good. recommend. So, so good. Yeah. And yeah. again, food, one of the uh, the Mexican yes. food truck trailer right off the interstate, just under the bridge. Um, that lady was very nice and that it served us a lovely breakfast burrito. Yes, that was good too. So that's what you, but you drive and you get off the highway and there's a gas, there's two In gas buyers, stations. I believe buyers, Colorado. Yeah, it's, it's buyers. Yes. Right. Yep. One hotel, uh, one hotel, and one it's, Mexican uh, the place. Los three Garcias. Cause it's a family 
place is the Mexican restaurant. Los, lo, really, it. Los Three Garcias. You <laughs> couldn't put the trace in there. <laughs> Mexican Americans. <laughs> uh, last year, we were talking with the owner, and he said when he applied for his liquor license, he had to go to the county seat, which is you know like another five exits up. Uh, they had no idea where the building was. He had to show them on a map where they're you know, like. There's something there. He's like, yes. <laughs> it was surprisingly busy. With it was all the race very people. busy. Yeah. Yes. We're, I don't know where the people came from, but it was busy. I don't I'm know sure they're very everybody. excited that we yes. were all there. Sure. And they're just happy when we leave. <laughs> okay. So that's location and accommodations. Track features. So this track's got some elevation change. Pretty awesome. I'll, uh, yeah, gonna... you, you actually drove the track, so you can tell us about it because Chrissy and I did one, one lap. sightseeing safety lap in minivan with John Pagel. So, and during that time, I said, This looks like a fun track to drive. Yes, it and that's really is. Got it. Uh, and, and you mentioned that it's owned by all the clubs. So, anytime he turns a profit, the clubs are like, Put it back into the track. We don't want any money back. Uh, and one of those is the Western, uh, uh, the, the Western Eastern, or no, I'm sorry, the Mountain. Racers Association, which is a motorcycle thing. So the elevation changes are impressive. And I think I have a map. So we'll talk about this a little bit. And as soon as it gets uh, way too boring, you guys tell me to quit sharing and I'll stop doing that. Um, it, it's, it is, it's very much like any other track with a lot of elevation changes. You can spend a lot of time there and you can, you can get comfortable on the track. But the nuances of it, you can spend a hundred hours on that track and never get every little nuance of what you're doing, especially throughout the changing weather conditions. But if for those watching at home, it is on the configuration that we were running a 15 turn, uh, 15 turn track. It actually goes over a hill, down around, back up that same hill. And then comes on there as you've got two big straightaways. And then that runs you along the, um, I'm going to say surprisingly spacious paddock area for as sparse as the track is, but it does fill up quickly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, There was was ample space for everybody. Mm -hmm. Especially if they further you got back out, but really there's, there's plenty. And if you're aggressive, they've got RV spots with a full up, full hookups. And then they've also got uh, covered garages, which a lot of the, the veteran local Canop- teams, Mary canopies. and all those they're guys, not, not yeah, I'm really sorry, good. canopies. And they I mean, back their yeah. trailers up I don't to know it. What you call them, but they're yeah. not, they don't have doors. So they're not. No, really it's garages. a roof. Thank you. It's it a, is. Uh, which is great when you covered, have a lot of covered rain, paddock so area. Covered yeah. is fine. Carport. Yep. It Carport. helps a little anyway. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So it's a 2.55 miles and, uh, they've actually got a setup so they can run several events at once. So it's, it's, it's a multi-configurable type type deal. Um, it has a, uh, it's steepest climb is 10% and there are 300 plus feet of cumulative elevation changes per lap. Uh, and this kind of plays into what you guys were having to deal with all weekend. It's also at 5,054 feet above sea level. So yep. there's a lot of folks up there. They were like, why can't I walk across the paddock? <laughs> <laughs> we did okay with that. Uh, Craigers, Craigers did not. He was no, really struggling. Because Craigers Sunday. lives at six feet above sea level. Yes. Uh-huh. He does. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yes. I mean, we're, we were, we're at all of a okay. hundred, but it was enough. <laughs> but we also watched it. So we made sure we, we were, we were. We're keeping well, on you it. Guys, you guys, you guys do a lot of hiking and you've, you've been to Colorado. You take vacations to Colorado to go hiking or you'll go Close to enough. the Adirondacks and you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. So you guys have done enough. this before. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but track had it from what I saw, there was a couple spots that were going to catch you though. If you do it, if you do them wrong, yeah, that's for sure. Decreasing yes. radius to some off camber. Some, some of them like is it plenty of blind Hills. I think. Yes. Uh, turn, um, turn five is a left-hander decreasing radius off camber blind downhill. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if it's humid, it gets very slick there. Oh, um, humid. Just humid? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, and yeah, it's, it's, in the it's high really desert. all it takes. Yes. 
Uh, but it was pouring rain all weekend. So that was a fun corner. And then that one leads down to turn five, which is where I, I, I theorize everyone's transmission blows because we never could get any, no one was getting traction in turn six. And that is a, a 180 ish right hander that leads onto a short straightaway in the back. And then you climb the climb the hill into seven for the hairpin into eight. And uh, that was, that one was always fun too, especially, you know, as it would get uh, darker. And then you're back down the hill for a series of turns on there. Um, turn eight could get you. That's where the truck flipped over. Not sorry. Didn't flip over, landed on Sideways. its side, saved it. Um, and they, the, the series of turns after that are literally called to hell on a bobsled because you are downhill full throttle. You go through gears faster than you think you would into the uh, back straight away. And that is followed by the 11, 12 complex ladder to heaven. And then turn 13, which is cresting onto that hill for the 14, 15 S's, which lead you on the main straightaway. And 13 is slick as hell. I don't know what's going on there. Like perfectly seasoned, really good, long haired, smart race car drivers would go off there without warning. No, on way. their first or second lap and on their out lap. Yeah, don't know what that was about. And then they come in with all kinds of dirt and mess up my my um, penalty box and <laughs> so much mud on that car that some of it ended up on my street car. True, it's, only because true. some people put it there because we <laughs> pulled we were pulling stuff off said car and noticed and noting how much dirt and grass there was. So uh, to let you guys in on that insider baseball joke, uh, I got into the car late in the afternoon on Saturday and on my outlap in the pouring rain went right off in turn 13. No excuse, just lost all traction. And the worst part of this is I went to crank the wheel. I felt the front wheels give away. I immediately start touching the brake. And every time I touch the brake, the front end just locks up and I slide very slowly right into the mud, four wheels off. But the entire time while I'm trying to manage this slide, not cause an accident, not flip the car in my brain, I'm going, I will never hear the end of this. Oh my gosh. This will, this will never, <laughs> oh my gosh. This will, I will never you know, just it, forever. So I truck through the mud, get it back onto the track, immediately go into penalty box, trying my best to beat the penalty. But as Chrissy mentioned, there are cameras and this particular turn is in full view of everyone on the track. So yeah, I was, I was already ratted out for a black flag before I I'd even idled halfway down pit lane. And, uh, uh, my friends were there and Chrissy turned around and recognized the car and went, Oh man, I can't believe. And then she recognized the helmet in the oh, entire tone. You, you changed. cannot get that away. <laughs> when you have your name on your helmet, you are, you <laughs> cannot get away. You, it's when, worse when your friends are the judges. Yes. And you know, and, so and you much know, worse. And you yeah. know better. Oh, you're absolutely right. My tone changed. And I was like, oh, look, it's the Miata. Oh, look at them. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> you are in much more trouble because it's you. Yes. No, That's when good. I pulled uh, the lengthy bits of, uh, of <laughs> agriculture. All from the kinds sides of, of the yes, car. like like whole Tapes weeds. Videos of and all the whole... blood on it, right? <laughs> Those weeds ended up on the mirrors of his other Miata later on. It was great. Because. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, well. Yep. Okay, oh. so but yeah, there's uh, a, there's a lot of track I, features. Uh, you guys <laughs> took the, the 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 lap on there. You thought it was an interesting track, and I've 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 driven there. I've done the 24. That's where I did the um, what do they even call it? Just me and Derek Steinkamp did the only. You know, we did the two 24s at the same time. Yes, yes. The uh, yeah, the effluence Whatever. of idiocy or something. Um, so I do, I I do sincerely enjoy the track. Uh. The staff has a lot to do with it. And then it is an interesting track. And if you're looking for one of those away races, High Plains Raceway is a good one. Uh, it's not that expensive to fly into the airport. And if you've got somebody that can pick you up or rent a car, you'll be driving for a little bit, but it's easy to get there. Mm -hmm. Have some accommodations on that one. Lots of elevation changes and, and just interesting. And I think it's, it's Colorado, so it doesn't count is midwest but i think they still maintain that midwest sensibility that makes racing and at autobahn and gingerman just polite chris i have a theory i don't think it's necessarily the mid of sensibility because people in the midwest i just i think they're just brainwashed they don't know any better people in colorado um 
are all almost all happy to live there. And any mm. place that I've been to where the people are genuinely happy to live or have chosen to live there, their attitude is always notably better than places where people are stuck and would like to move or don't know they can get out of and things like that. Like you go to Portland, Oregon, Missoula, Montana, Denver, Colorado, places like that. The people are just going to be happier than in Paramus, New Jersey, <laughs> for example. Uh, yeah. We laugh, but he's right. and You know it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So I, I, I enjoy the Colorado. Uh, you know, you get Ian from Apis adjacent, of course, uh, Mary, Dr. Dr. Mom and Chris, yeah. they're out there. Corey was out there. Corey Dickman, our good buddy. Corey was, out there. Uh, it was Aaron Cole. It was nice to spend some time with him. He's a wonderful guy. And uh, yeah. Yeah, he Just dug stops. you guys. That was fantastic. We we were chatting about that in Gingerman. Um, yeah. yeah. All good. Uh, and then Jan, Jan and Tom Cole, they Absolutely. always, yeah. they always Wonderful. bring it hard. Theme, the whole theme Salty well. Thunder crew, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, three three different cars. All yeah. right. So, uh, mentally, now you mentioned the weather to start off. We'll, we'll say it again. Uh, Friday, hot, sunny, lovely day. And then it poured. And then it didn't stop raining really all weekend. Nope. That was oh, I did on it. Sunday evening. Actually, Sunday... Right, right as soon as the checker was over. Correct. And then it would pour and then it didn't oh, again. Saturday evening, too, after the checker, we had some dry time for uh, the potluck, which we could Correct. talk about it more did, in a bit. Yes, it but the, it was dried out for the potluck. It rained the entire week. Fire race. Uh, the whole race. And so some of it was, it was drizzle You're it welcome. went anywhere from drizzle to absolute monsoon so much so that in the penalty box which we can talk about our penalty box not really a penalty box at all uh but would have wake cars would come in and there were waves that's how much mm -hmm. rain we had uh everything was wet we were wet we had jackets on the whole time uh we tried not to get our shoes too wet it was just yep. wet. yeah we were in the the pavilion where you can sit and you know, buy food from the trailer right there. It's one of the only dry places there. So we were okay. And one nice team um, loaned us two very good quality 10 oh by 10 pop-ups that it. were completely mission critical. So that was great. What the, that was the, uh, was it the Christmas Audi team that did that? No, it was the green E36 that didn't pass tech until like Saturday that Correct. they still loaned us those things. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, but it rained enough that I'm sure on the wrap up video, you will see this, uh, uh, you could, I'm not joking, swim yeah. in the water in the paddock. I, not, not like must... splash in a puddle, actually no, swim. He wasn't even dragging. Like he was, he went to put a chair, a bag chair in and the chair went all the, the water went up to the, up to the back. It like went up to the arms and then he decided to swim in it. It was like a pool. I, I did see that. Eric, yeah. He Aaron got showed that one several us. diseases from it, but yeah, that's yes. okay. Yes, he probably did. Uh, it's Colorado. I also... That's probably relatively clean-ish Oh, water. I'm sure it's, it's not. still it's puddle of rainworms. Our, There's got to be ringworm in there somewhere. And, right? Oh, and <laughs> like all of the car, the runoff from all the engine swaps and oil and stuff. So speaking yeah. of oil, I took a video um, that may or may not make it of the... Um, our penalty box and how wet it was but you at some point there was not too much water but a running river and it was um it had all the oil stains so we didn't even bother with we didn't bother with kitty litter it was somewhere between just an oil stain all rainbows and then there's splotches of big things of like very like mud um that's really what it was is mud but it was actually yeah. like a big pile of mud and then more oil slick yeah multiple when times during judging uh a car would come in and they would sit, be sitting there and i'd be like you have oil dripping and they're like no no we don't and i was like so this was a stream a little while ago so it's, it was clean we there was no oil and i can see it dripping and running down the sidewalk i was like this is your oil and they're like yeah. oh yeah i guess it yeah. is yes yeah. Multiple yeah, cars. And the mud chunks from everyone that would go off like mental and they'd stop in the penalty box and then the mud would start falling off in chunks. It was great. Yeah. 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 All right. So, and so, it's that uh, nice yeah. agricultural thick oh, mud. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That you get That's at Thunderhill, that you get at Button Willow. It's, yeah. It had some, it had some heft. Yeah. Yes, it did. Uh, so, Friday we had tech um, and it was, it was, it was slow to start, but then once it started, we never stopped because there was only one line because Pagel did every single car. 
So it was a little slow that way, but it was kept one, us coming. We were like one to five thirty. Yeah. We were straight through. We had a few people that put up a bit of a fight. About Let's just say it all worked out in the end. Say. Yep, yes. all worked out fine in the end. We thought we did all right at the classing, considering the, that it was a wet race. Um, only no one was a, drastically out of place. Only a couple themes, a couple pretty good themes, but the bribes were off the hook. Yeah. Every team brought a bribe. Many of them brought cases of we had every kind of booze, some of them specially for each each um of us. So I had requested Denver quarters because now you all know that I'm a dork and on my Friday evenings putting my quarters in my book. Um, but they brought me Denver quarters and one of them brought me like a book of minted Denver quarters. Um, people just brought me piles of quarters and they were like, hey, I think the hopefully these are some that you need. And I'm like, okay. Um, Chris asked for rum. Uh uh Craigers wanted, Craigers wanted scotch. cigars and scotch and he got both. Yep. And we and brought there was a couple so much left. Everyone got stuff. The corner workers got yeah. stuff. Everyone yep. the love was shared. It was yep. great. All the beer we went into the went into the coolers and we all had them after after track one called. Mm. Um not just every- a cooler. Didn't you guys have a f- That's what I was about to say. Oh, one yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their bribe was a you know college dorm fridge, not the little cube one, like the little oh, taller a big one. Big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was they brought it to us on a dolly, stocked and cold. That's how you do it, friends. Gatorade, stocked and cold. Water Gatorade, and beer. Water, beer, Red Bull, all yep. ready to go. It was fantastic. And it's Colorado, so beer game already. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was a variety, too. So everybody was like, I kind of want this. And somebody was like, oh, that one's a good one. So, yeah, that was uh, that also off the hook. Really, really good bribes. Actually, I think I want to say it was maybe it, it was either Aaron or Jeff Stobbs said they've never seen this kind of hookup. Like it was really, really good. So uh, so it was fun. It was great. Tech was a really long day. Uh, it was nice that it was dry because we were moving all yeah. around. Uh, you know, we kind of like wished wish for a cloud. It was pretty hot. One fool brought us these Mercedes shirts from Europe and Dilly didn't get them into class B. Not that it would have mattered, but, oh, uh, never been oh, well, class B. and, and a really good bottle of rum, by the way, that, like they That's actually true. researched on the internet hey. and had to go to, and had to go to three different liquor stores in Las wow. Vegas to find, the, which was funny because we checked a bag in the way home. <laughs> yeah. There was, cause when I showed up to the third one, I, I, I'd gone to the, the second liquor store and they're like, we don't have it here, but we have it at this one. I'll call over there and have them reserve it. And I walked in and I'm like, Hey, I'm looking for so-and-so the rum was called Mount gay. And the guy goes, Oh, you're the Mount gay guy. <laughs> and I'm like, in any other context. Yeah. Okay. Sure. You know what? That's just, you know, you know, I'm, I'm flattered. I don't think I'm that good looking, but okay. Yeah. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> that's good. I like that. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. great. So yeah. So tech was really good. Uh, long day, but we had a good time. Okay. Uh, the so, well, no, was... no, but you mentioned you oh. mentioned the themes weren't quite as on point, but there were good themes. What were you guys' favorites? Well, some of the well, the winners, we were judges, so we got to choose the winners. So you want to wait for the winners? We can well, we well, talk that, about them last I, week. Like we? uh who who was we didn't have who a show were the themes week, that who were the themes that, that who were the themes that didn't get a trophy but still brought it pretty well? Or were there any? Uh, the 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 dropkick bear Murphy koala E46. Oh, yes. oh the 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 Australian girl in the murder koala. Yeah. Totally. Oh, she, yes. Like, it, they, it was, they, like it was I feel meta. like if it she showed up, bears, drop yeah. kick. Yeah, it's something. I don't know. I feel like I if she showed up to tried. murder me, I'd actually kind of be okay with it because she's got that so, delightful kind of bubbly personality in the accent. She's like, oh, hello, God. you know, just met a koala, he had to take you. And I'm like, okay. all right, yeah, it's a good way to go. So I, I And they had such a good nat- attitude, so I was voting for them, but they got hit early, really early, um, and they worked and got it fixed, and they had put a whole new front clip on it, basically, and they were like, yeah, we'll just go get that spare car a couple hours away and they did and yeah they were great really liked them they were they were fun yes they're yep, wonderful they were good i don't know mm, don't try uh, too hard with your swapped miatas i'll just say that to people like the, the you're on the edge if it weren't a wet race we would have clamped down a little harder some of those <laughs> anyway um they're just i, I wanted to 
yeah, we'll talk more about the, the Saturday night festivities. I think that's where I was really impressed, but just Chrissy. Yes. Our Friday night activities. So we went back to the <laughs> hotel. No problem. Got dinner. Um, this track has a moth problem. Colorado has a moth problem. Okay. Well, Colorado has a math problem. <laughs> They might have a math They've got a math problem, problem too. Yeah, I don't different know. parts I of math, 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 math. <laughs> math. That's that's Denver Tech Center area. They have a math problem. I said math, but right? you got math. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, all the above. Here's what he wants to hear. The, I, this is a M O T H a moth problem. So they have a moth problem. The track had them. Um, and so they were kind of flying into everything. There were plenty of cars that started actually each time we were racing, they were starting with moths in them. So we, uh, had one in our rental. We didn't play guess the rental. Did we say what we had? Well, um, we all, we, we all were that, in the, we, we all, all drove the, the, rental. the rental. We can't guess so. it. Oh, no, Who's no. I guess it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Um, I was thinking of the, the, you guys guess the rental. Uh, that's not, there's nobody. It was there. a Mustang convertible. <laughs> ah, <da! Okay. laughs> ah, so anyway, uh, we had our car alarm was going off all night. All of the names. So this three is three times. It went off three uh, times. I think it was more than that. You got up three times to get it. But it, when I went downstairs to go get stuff, it went off a couple more times whatever it went off a bunch of times and everybody was like oh you're that guy why is your car alarm going off uh we think the next day we i'll tell you another moth story but anyway we think it was the moth it was stuck yeah we think the moth like, was yeah. activating the motion center there's a big moth and it was, yeah. it was a huge car. honking moth that tried to kill yeah. me and craggers yeah yes all right yes and, so then, and then the next day there was one in the truck and then i'm halfway across colorado on my way home and moths. I look in my rearview mirror, and there's a friggin' California condor sized moth buzzing around the back of my Miata. Yep. Yep. And they were, but Is they were right? in race race cars when they were starting. It was, <laughs> yes. yes. It just oh, yeah, several. Thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Racing. I can't comment too much on the racing. Me neither. A few people got three black flags. Some people, we had a lot of people with, with their second flag. And so we did a, a new penalty for the second flag that was quick. And we'll hopefully it'll be on the wrap up video. Um, for those of you oh, who I have can't. seen Dumb and Dumber, which should be, most people because you're it's Americans a worthwhile and you movie. pay your taxes. Right, exactly. It's a worthwhile movie. There's a time where they're heading west toward Colorado. At some point in the night, they made a wrong turn. They're still in Kansas. But they don't know that. So they're looking around and say, you know, I thought the Rocky Mountains would be a little rockier than this. And the guy says, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. That John Denver is full of shit, man. So and now I, I, I have living in Oklahoma or when I was in Oklahoma, moving to Colorado and then back again, I have made that drive from Oklahoma into Colorado. And when you cross into Colorado, there is zero indication that you have left Kansas. You don't start yeah. seeing mountains until you are an hour and some change into Colorado and where high plains raceway is. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's, it's because it's, we're in, we're the Denver race. Feet. Yeah. Right. We're the Denver race, but where's the, where are those Rocky mountains? They're not there. So I had the team get a second person there, which most of the time there was a second person already there. They got in the car, videoed that script there. So I think we got that 15 or 16 times on, on Saturday alone. And then we, we, that was it. We were done with it after Saturday, but we got enough to make the point to do the John Denver. So that, that was a fun one that we did. Appreciate who, it. Who was the one that called the area around the track? the Microsoft screensaver from the nineties. And not me. It was, no, okay. I don't know. It, it was Craig it or have... Aaron. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's back in the day when you had your, you know, windows 99. Might have been Stobbs. That's kind of a Stobbs thing to say. It was but... Stobbs. It was 100% Stobbs. Yes, yeah. absolutely. He called it that one. Um, on the track, I know they were issues. I didn't have any issues. And the racing was, I think one time someone got the New Jersey good luck symbol out of me. Um, cause they were, really? you know, dive, I just passed them and they were dive bombing me into a corner as I set up, I'm like, I, I have more motor than you. What are you doing? And I just kind of gave them the, you know, Italian eh, and didn't deal with uh, them. No, again, so not but, the full Rhode Island wave. Just no, the, no, no, no. Uh, uh, what are you doing? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. come on. Oh, that's, but it that's, was, that's uh, but the, the racing was, you know, the, the fast cars were the fast cars, the slow cars were the slow cars. Everyone recognized that there were cars that were going to be quicker in the dry and then slower in the wet. And then some cars were just, you know, good in both. 
Uh, the, the Subarus were remarkably disappointing with what should have been uh, clean racing. And then the class C cars were just doing a great job of being painfully predictable. Uh, like across the board, I don't think I had an issue with a class C car all weekend. Just nope, they're going to, they're going to start on the outside. They're going to go to the inside. They're going to go to the outside. They clearly see me. Life is good. I'm gone. So we had a lot of people, and I'm going to say a lot because it was more than average, of people that were spinning or well, mostly spinning in their f one to three laps. Yeah. It would be tons. fairly consistent. We would say, how many how many laps you've been in the car? I just got out. Okay. Or they're like, mm, like, like three. And we're like, I, I was like, you know, is it more than five? They're like, no. Yep. I or know. they go four off. Yes, right. Or they well, would, well, idiots going spin. four off on like their outlap. Right, spinning yep. or doing something. You were in good company, sir. Yes, but it was very consistent. Like we could call it, and there were yeah. you know very there were a couple that didn't, but for the most part, it was it was pretty consistent. So. I was also amazed at the number of people who don't have any understanding uh, at all about rain yeah. driving. I I started to ask people eventually, "Have you ever driven in the rain before?" No. no. Were, okay. Oh, okay. So then I would give a mini uh, chalk talk on rain lines and understanding how rain lines work and that you just need to go find the traction. And I got to say, I don't think I, I, I only ever saw like one of those people ever again mm -hmm. that I had like that conversation yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like agree. I would draw a diagram of a corner on the water and their windshield and show a standard line, a dry line, and then show a rain line. Like, look, this is like, this is why this is polished. It's got all the stuff. The, the pores are all full. You need to find the other places. So try weird spots, feel the track, find the traction, go forth. And and we, you guys have done this before. When it rains that much, the track will almost change from lap to lap. Because yeah, yeah. I'm I'm doing the I'm doing the Chris yeah. Abbott find no reflection, no reflection, no reflection, no reflection you know, dull spot all the way around. And then I come back around on the next track. I'm like, well, that's, it's not the same. Cause it was just mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah. So we had uh 16 or 17 rookie teams. Uh, and many of them had never, some of them had never been tra on track before. And we were fairly surprised. Some of them were like, well, we did one HPDE last weekend. And we were like to no wheel to wheel. No, no, nothing. Okay. So, yeah. well, so good we luck. Were, right. We were kind of <laughs> impressed and noted that there were a lot of rookie teams, which um, didn't help if you've never drew a race in the rain because some of them had never raced before. So some did fine. Others, not so much. It didn't listen to us like the team with the Mercedes E430. We said, oh, oh and uh, what kind of brake pads do you have? Oh, they're stock. Okay. They're like, yeah. but we changed the, the we changed, changed the fluid. The, brake, the fluid. And we're like, that's good. Cool. And we said, all right, guys, listen to me very carefully. What? This is this is a this is a lot of car for you. This has a lot of power, it's and heavy. you're going to overcook the brakes, and it's heavy, and its suspension is squishy, and you have to be very careful like, with this. Okay, okay. Second driver, guess who hit the wall hard enough to bend everything? Oh. Yeah, yep. they were out. And the the walls at High Plains Raceway, they're they're spaced pretty. They're they're spaced smart. They're not right up on the track, so you got to cover them. a lot of grass. They found well, them. Grass yeah. in the rain when it's raining all the time, plus oil that's leaking from your car. It's easy <laughs> to find a wall because you don't stop when you hit the grass. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So that was the racing from our angle. For the most part. Mm. Yep. Okay. Well, cool. when the track went dry, we high-fived everybody, and then we went to a potluck. So the potluck here is a little different. Uh, <laughs> there was a there was an idea, a quick idea to have everybody convene in one place because of the rain. Fortunately, the, the rain led up and was really pretty dry that night. If it rained, it mm -hmm. was later in at the in the into the night, so which was great. Uh, so we, uh, so it is a, what we call trunk or treat style is what we would call it. Uh, they have mm -hmm. different stations. People would decorate their stations. They would, uh, some had drinks and food. Some of them just had food. Uh, most of them had full of crock pots and music, probably lots of good eat, music. Yep. You could probably eat your, eat one meal at some places. And then there's other places that had easy cheese and crackers and mad dog. 
Um, so there, uh, there's the Malort station. There's the Malort course. station. Yes, which we will we probably pause. should put in its put pause, its own pause, <laughs> pause for Malort. But what was on it? But yes, put it its own own. There was pizza. There was there was plenty of stuff. People were bringing. Oh, we're gonna watch this video. Hold on. There, we we're bringing um people uh soup like Chris Champion just spread over to a table. Okay, but there's is there there's no sound. Oh no, I I I yeah, I didn't I figured you keep talking. This is just oh, you know okay. This is just the, the video of <laughs> and, me yelling at Chrissy you. Chrissy's <laughs> just done her shot before the after taste of the Malort hits her. And right there you see her laughing, and then she starts to realize yep. Oh yep. dear God, what just <laughs> crawled into my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> and then I say it tastes like gasoline. And then everybody's like, Yeah, I know. So Malort, <laughs> if you've not had Malort, you must try it. No, don't well, try and, it. And, and if you go to any race with the uh, nine finger drifter, so anything out here, kind of like Arizona, Colorado, uh, you know, anything. They go to the, CMP too. So yes, with the GDO, man, they are actually sponsored, actually sponsored by Jepson's Malort. Chris's favorite and part of the Malort car. It's the back of the car where they have a picture of them right after they've taken a shot of Malort. <laughs> It's fantastic. Now, like mentally, big, you, like, it, uh, you leveled up. You um got a old style from Phil to do a proper Chicago handshake of the Malort and the old style. And I have to oh. say, I had a funny story with Phil. Phil drove his, his uh, Subaru Sandbar van. And at, it was one point, if I just didn't already know Phil and or, you know I didn't know where I was, it would have been an extremely sketchy thing when Phil uh, offered for me to come back with him to his van for a beer. <laughs> Because he had brought some special and some interesting beers, and I go back in the van. Has got like towels shut in all the windows, so you can't see what it's in. But it's there's a little a, tiny I, van. There's just so a cooler like next to it. Like so small, I think right? my Miata is like half a foot longer than his right. van. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, longer. Which is when, you think longer? When, when the when when the guy says, "Hey, you want to?" I got some beer back at my van. It's <laughs> <That's laughs> usually oh, not a great no. way to go, but this time it's Phil. It's okay. Phil. Yeah. No, so it was, uh, it was awesome. Yeah, so we had a we had uh, a great time bouncing between stations and talking to people and passing. Um, oh, the Malort. That's what I was gonna say. Real quick thing about Malort. So, uh, it is not so bad when you first shot it, and then the aftertaste is enough to just kill you for like a good couple hours. It tastes. Matt Adair warned us. He's like, "You're in for a 15 minute experience." Yeah, <laughs> and it like changes. That it like burned my tongue. But Matt Adair kind of? says no to the booze. You know, he gets <laughs> no, he had some before. Consider. He had oh, some okay. before we we had right. it. So, yeah. um, but it was basically everybody's walking around like, like, like sucking their mouth because you would like burn off the the like your taste buds kind of. So everything kind of tastes bad, and it just have to go tastes, get some Mad Dog from Jeff. It tasted like he just like out. licked licked the sidewalk or something. Like it was. It was oh, much... you drank the water from penalty. Got normally, it. normally you drink a shot and it burns and you're like, wow, that was terrible. Let me just drink this beer. And then it just continued to get worse. So that's when you watch that video, which I invite you to go do. I'm glad we got that on video. Uh, yeah, that's a, why... it's on our it's on our Insta. We, we got a lot you, of response see, on that one. You see the shot and you're like, oh, it's not so bad. Yeah. Oh, no. That's what I felt like my mouth the, the, was like. The closest thing I can relate it to is if you've been under the car and you're 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 just like you've just gotten this, you know, new pile of crap and you're working on it. And, you know, it's got a dozen years of just stuff caked underneath it. And you're trying to get a fluid and a bolt stucks and you finally get the bolt loose. And then some mystery fluid <laughs> flows into your mouth <laughs> off of this filthy engine block. Oh does this happen more than you know, you'd like to think apparently it just yeah. has to happen once because that yeah. was a ptsd moment when i did that malort and i just i remember being under some rusty hunk of crap in nebraska trying to change some fluid I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh yeah it's the that tastes like the reason i actually always have safety goggles under a car yeah tonight's the night you fight your dad <laughs> which is an actual marketing phrase of this company. And they had wristbands that they were giving out that said that. I can, I, I can I see think, it. I thought, that, I thought that Johan had those made specifically for this. Uh, I, think, I can but, see it over there. It's, it's still yeah. on the kitchen table. That shows yes, how much we uh, clean around here. So, yep. so if we haven't talked it up enough, next time you're at a race with Johan, go get you some Malort. 
the, but the potluck legitimately was very good. Uh, lots of great food. Uh, Aaron's wife, Kelly, made a whole bunch of delicious barbecue that was down in the pavilion. We started with that and, and then we just went around everywhere. We had crepes and pizza and malort and ice uh, milkshakes and yes the milkshakes like, were legit right so much good stuff it was a great welcoming warm inviting atmosphere all around um the fact that it was only 70 cars made it a lot less chaotic than what we usually have in the northeast and then everything devolved into drunken karaoke in the pavilion because the pavilion has a karaoke setup thanks to glenn so yeah yes that's when we pieced out to journey yeah you, 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 yeah, you, you, you had some predictables, but, uh, I was, I was impressed with the, the married couple God, what rap song were they singing? I, yeah, it was, I don't know, but it was amazing. They, <laughs> it was something about getting high. Uh, and it was like a rap song, it but they, it, it was, it was an obscure song that obviously they yeah. sung to, it, it to, was, it, it was not the, so the... I got high. It was like getting high, meeting a girl. And like the girl is straight up like met, you know, syllable for syllable, uh, uh, know, ludicrous style you. talking about bending a girl over. And yeah, it was, it was <laughs> impressive. Just her it was impression, no pun intended, her ability to actually enunciate every syllable, you know, just, just oh, describing fiction. a, yeah. <laughs> So, oh, it was uh, good. Uh, yeah, it was. It, so, it was. I, I, so we all agree. Thumbs up at the uh, HBR potluck. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, really different. Yeah, I don't think we could make that happen in our place. I can barely get people to actually come bring their food to a table, let alone for them to assume that they're going to set up a table. Most of our paddocks are so spread out; it's really difficult. Yeah, you know, it, it, I was having a conversation with uh, with one of our our regular listeners, Michael, uh, Mike K. You know, and uh, they were talking about you know potluck. Potlucks have gotten very strong, especially on the East Coast over the couple of years. They get like two hours of staying power, and then everyone's just back to their thing. And the the one at HPR, it was it was rocking when we left. Yeah, and yeah, we left yeah. late. <laughs> yep. And we had a a bit of a fun ride home in the Mustang. We were all it was it was Mental and Craigers in the front, Chrissy and I in the back of a Mustang convertible, so we were all um, plenty of room. And of course, there was a moth flying around the car and flew around in a metal <laughs> don't space. Don't drink metal. Don't drink yep. right now. <laughs> it flew up, up Craig's skirt as he's wearing his utility kilt. And, and he and made a really fun noise most, when he did. Yeah. <laughs> one of the most then, macho people we know suddenly hits a voice octave, seven octaves. It's a my. And then he flips it back and then it's like flying in my face. And we're in the back of the convertible with the convertible up at this point. Not so for we long. say, so that's we can, a pullover. We can solve this problem. <laughs> Pull the top down. So we are just laughing. And so we have a good half an hour drive back. Uh, and it's kind of cold. I did play cold. the Moth podcast briefly. Just because <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> perfect comic timing it was it was so good uh, so yes. all the all the cows in buyers colorado were subject to the four of us screaming journey songs at the top of our lungs yes blasting across the high plains of colorado at 11 30 at night yep. <laughs> it was one of those memorable fun times ah uh, yes yeah that's that saturday night then yeah uh, uh, we are hurt from laughing at the end of that <laughs> oh, well <laughs> And then uh, uh, after after yeah you know, we went back and 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 had a few nightcaps there in the uh, in the room, and as I was leaving the uh, rest of the uh, lemon staff you know not the not the 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 big wigs but you know the the main you know support staff they were downstairs doing the same thing, so they were and they were offering and I'm like okay seriously I got to race a car tomorrow I'm going I got go, I got I got all get of us sleep. did not so that's why we were like you yeah. we were like sure <laughs> let's keep going yes yes. So that was uh, fun. Uh, I feel like from my perspective, Sunday was more of the same weather. Yeah. Sunday was exactly the same as Saturday. The race went on. Extra, Stuff happened. extra care to go very, very slow. Didn't go, right? <laughs> yep. People were a little cleaner, which is good because Stobbs was doing a tippy tap. So he yell would yell at random passersby. Uh, we did more of the coloring book. Then one gave us, a, or, or I don't know if someone gave us, it was part of the bribe box Rich. or the judge's box. Yeah, yeah. Rich I mean, it wasn't that? it wasn't given to us. It was they bought it yes, for the Richard box it. to be, to it, be So used. it was a uh, Dick coloring books, like you know, fabulous. Not Richards, actual penises. Actual penises. Correct. 
So that was if you hit a third penalty, you had to uh, lovingly color a page from the Dick coloring book. Some people were initially quite grumpy about it, but by the time they were done, no one was no one was sad. They were all having a fun time with their coloring book. <laughs> yes. So we had a good time. Uh, so I've got the winners all here. We can talk about the winners briefly here. We're gonna keep keep this rolling. Winner on laps was Smoke Weed Racing in a 1970 Datsun 510. And you say really a Datsun 510 overall? And yeah, and this they were bitching and moaning about being an A, just bitching, bitching, bitching. And Eric had said, do not put them in B. And so we're there. We're not putting them in B. They're an A. They can bitch. We were right. How about that? Who knew? Yeah. They drove clean, but holy crap, that car was fast. Good yeah. God. <laughs> Apparently they all they're they are have a shop vintage bring race Dotsons. So yeah, that's why. And, and there's doing. a there's a lot of times where people show up with very well built, very fast cars and they drive like dicks. I didn't think they were uh were overly aggressive. They were their perfectly... paddock speed was uh faster than would be desired repeatedly. Yeah. But on the yep. track, I they would they would wait and then they knew they had the motor, they knew they had the steering, they could they they'll, they were just gonna take you at will and they they, they weren't tools about it, at least everyone that I encountered. Yep. Class B was Secrets of Slow in a 1990 Audi 90. Like they've been waiting for years for this day to come. A race with nothing but rain. They got it. Good for them. <laughs> if it rains where you live, you're ready for an Audi. Yep. Uh, class C was Screaming Weenies in an Isuzu Impulse that has hit everything but the lottery. Like uh, there was not, nothing straight left on that car. Matadere's nephew and his racing friends. Yep. And that car came out of Houston. That car yeah. has been around. It's a 32 year old Isuzu Impulse. Like, what else is where else is it going to go? Rebody Geo Storm. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. Or <laughs> Choice was Whiskey and Donuts. This is an E36 team. That's his Pagel's Choice. They're the ones that brought us the tents and uh, great guys, super nice. Their car, when it showed up Friday, it was a car with a cage in it. Nothing else was done. Like nothing, like no gauges, no seat, no bells, nothing else was done. They worked hard. They just kept coming back. Like, how's this? How's this? How's this? And eventually they got on track. They had a great attitude about it. They were in, they were in like no hurry either. Now we're just going to keep working on it. Very nice. Uh, Horrick Fix was DAE racing. That's a 944 that they put in a 1.8 T. And of course, you know, it had electrical problems. It involved <laughs> getting new sensors for everything. And of course, because it's a Volkswagen 1.8T, that's all one year only sensors. So they had to go find it from a 99 because that's what the motor was from, because that's what they had in the junkyard that day. They got a new ECU. They took the old ECU. They cleaned it with a toothbrush and brake cleaner to get all the contacts clean, all that kind of crap. Like eventually something worked and it ran. And then it blew all the charge pipes off because it actually was making boost and working. So, uh, but eventually they got it fixed. They struggled that thing all weekend. I remember him telling me, he's like, oh, we were feeling so joyous when we finally felt boost. So we strapped someone in and then pop. Yeah. Yep. A judge's choice was MoFoCo in their Ford Focus <laughs> Pac-Man edition. They played the Pac-Man songs until the speakers shorted out from the rain, unfortunately. Uh, great attitude, nice people. And, yeah, he uh, told me they knew well. they had it right. And that was Jeff's suggestion of having to play the Pac-Man theme. So we knew we had it right because everyone that walked by us would laugh. But the two people on either side of us absolutely hated us. Yep. Not surprised. That and we so woke we up. We don't every, care. Yeah, we'd get to the track and we'd be prepping to get ready there. And we knew the day had started when you would start hearing the yeah, and they played the Pac Man Fever, nineteen seventy eight soundtrack on repeat. Yeah, over. Yeah. Uh, the I got screwed was the Vannon Ball. I mean, he got a he got a good run of trophies out of this. Zach did. He got and screwed because why he, did he get screwed? This is a he, great story. He was he had the IOE locked down pretty well. He was in like the half, top half of the field. He was running mm -hmm. great in a minivan, and then they did a brake pad change because they're doing AutoZone value craft uh, lifetime many, many warranty replacement alum, right? But they did it wrong, and that left front wheel, the caliper was locked up. Like, Craigers and I were looking at it. It was smoking. We could see the caliper locked up. They went back to jack it up to get it, and Zach was the one that jacked it up. And then they have a rule. Zach's not supposed to do that. 
it's a good rule because when he did, he zacked it up on the timing cover and broke a piece off on a one year only slightly unobtainium timing cover on that Chrysler engine. And yeah, so and, and Zach screwed. is a fantastic person, wonderful to talk to, great to hang yep. out because you guys hung out with him in New Jersey. He was loading everybody yep. up in the van and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, he's an adventurer, uh, he's an intrepid soul. He is not a car person. <laughs> Yeah, he's better now than he was for three or four weeks ago. So there's that. Yep, there's that. <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, the regional award was smells like Ricky Spirit. Went to 42 hours of melons. They had an, uh, an E30, a four cylinder E30 watermelon theme, but very thoroughly done. They gave us watermelon, everything for bribes, which no one wanted because no one actually likes watermelon flavored anything. Um, they Except were, watermelon. Like, <laughs> right. They were in the top 10 coming into the end when they had a like, they have their spoiler that had a, they bumped something or it fell off, whatever it was. They had to fix that. But they good attitude did really well. Nice job for them. Uh, and HMG went to Hangar 13 Racing. This is just as uh, Jan and Tom Cole and company and kids. And you can tell Jan's kids there. They're very clearly Jan's kids. And they did a fantastic theme with their 72 Vega. It was the Vincent Vega from Pulp Fiction. So the outfits were right in costume all weekend. They had a bunch of people walking around with the briefcase you open with the gold lights inside, including quite often uh, normal well-adjusted Mike. And when normally well-adjusted Mike walks around in a suit and wants to show you what's in his briefcase, it's usually not a, a thing I would suggest, but some things were okay. Yep. Some things were not. Yep. Yeah, they so had... They had gone to a thrift store and bought a dozen of those things. Oh, did they? I... Oh, yeah. The, no two briefcases were the same. Every oh. briefcase had something. One of my favorites was uh, on Saturday during the day, uh, normal well-adjusted Mike comes up to me and offers me the briefcase, and I open it, and it's Rain-X, Barbersol, and some blue terry cloth towels. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so I made the mistake of opening. I opened it. 15 times uh oh the one time he gave me my bribe with a pile of quarters in in one of the briefcases that was okay uh then the one time i opened it in and it was his race shoes and i was not okay with that so that happened <laughs> because mike doesn't wear shoes very often he did most of the weekend so because it was, was raining that. but yeah <laughs> no because he was in costume he wore oh, his yeah. jacket and all of his actually more clothes than he probably normally does through the whole race uh yes yeah, so that's where yep. we got the milkshakes uh we could make them add booze if we wanted to which was great uh and they're just awesome people so yeah, yeah it was awesome yeah, good Thomas and are chopper, just fascinating chopper people. bicycle for a judge mobile that oh, was right? like a really good replica of, of uh the chopper from it's a Pulp touch Fiction. sketch yeah. yep yeah totally. it's not a motorcycle it's a chopper baby yep <laughs> which chopper is this uh so <sighs> Yeah. yeah, that's that's awards, that's results. In general, very nice time. Lovely people. Yep. Reasonable selection of cars. Normally when we say we go to a way race, track. especially that we've never been to, we are very sad that we're not racing. This weekend, we were not sad we were not racing because <laughs> we would have been sad, especially in somebody else's car. Truth, like I, it would have been sad to pay for us to be racing in on this track during this weekend there was not a whole lot of dry nope. time somebody said on sunday they're like i said when were you out and they said oh i was out yesterday when it was dry and i was like was it dry like you know <laughs> no, i think that no. it's a I relative like concept everything's very relative yes sure 20 minutes there might have been some dry but that's about yeah. it so um so we weren't really that sad uh one of the I drivers like on my it. team dan uh good driver drives a uh, formula mazda uh, he was, he, he got the dry session on Saturday and set fastest lap of the weekend. Uh, and I lucked out on Sunday and I got the dry 30 minutes and oh, I didn't realize there was a dry thirties on, on Sunday. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, just, just enough for me to get fastest lap. <laughs> and then it started raining again. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. Um, I, I probably didn't notice when it was dry because that was the exciting time that I could run from the pavilion to the restroom and not get super wet. So that's probably the times where I just <laughs> neglected to realize that people are racing yeah. and it's dry over there. Because that, that river on the other side, opposite side of where the pavilion is, mm -hmm. that's a four foot wide river. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the team had taken your New Jersey thing and laid out the, uh, 
the planks the ramps you know? <laughs> the ramps to your uh trailer so you can use them as bridges yes yeah. we've done that <laughs> thing. excellent um, so okay. uh i see a lot of good stories Anything to wrap it up yeah. yeah uh i i uh i i was with um jerry ringle i i get to race with jerry about twice a year and jerry is just you know the, those guys are always fun we th- we all had dinner with them that whole crew friday night yeah uh, great great folks yeah just always in fact i think jerry bought dinner for everybody you know all the all the different staff people good guy i always like hanging out with jerry and i think we've got some more nonsense planned uh this year so i got invited to that so that was that was a great story for me i enjoyed that and what everyone who's listening doesn't know is I didn't tell Chris and Chrissy I was coming. So I was trying to be sneaky, drove all the way up there, drove all night, got off work Thursday, went home, grabbed my bag, did a 12 hour cannonball, got to the track just in time for tech and was trying to walk backwards so that they wouldn't know it was me until right up on there. And instantly they both go, Hey, hippie, get a haircut. I think I saw you because somebody said, oh, yeah, but you know Mental's here? And I was like, no, I did not know because we were working. And then I that Chris was talking to somebody w- with a car, and I think we brought he, we brought him over. Um, but no, somebody totally s- screwed the, suge- the uh, surprise. Surprise. Yep. That's, we're yeah, still it, surprised. <laughs> yes, yes. No, no, we were. We, we hadn't been in the same place since New Jersey last year. Something like, like that. I guess. Yeah. I so, see you every yeah. week. So that's why I think that I, I, I do. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's just different in meat space. I miss you guys. Oh, yeah. 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 So that was, was nice that was see. a lot of fun. So I'd, I'd wander over and watch you guys dispense justice and laugh and, uh, and be glad that it wasn't me. And then, yeah, then the infamous, uh, moth incident that honestly I have gone, I have paid for core classes to work out that I did not get the workout <laughs> in my stomach that we did just laughing about the moth and the, the absurdity okay. of that one. So that was, yeah. that was just a, a, it was, it was a great time all around. And then also it's just, you know, we've all been doing this long enough that we have friends in all these different spaces, Tom and Jan Cole, uh, Ian so from much. apex adjacent, uh, the, the crew in the, uh, the Porsche, the, the, the one, eight, you know, there's just so many great guys, uh, the Mofogo guys, they were all happy to, to be there. Just what a great time. Just getting to see everybody. Corey snuck in on me. I didn't know he was coming. So it was a good time. Yes. Everybody asks us when we're coming back. We're like, mm, it's gonna be for a while. So <laughs> Yep. Yep. Awesome. What were, what well, were some of you guys just yell? You know, I'm 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 you listed all of them. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> yep. Good times, good people. Looks like a good track. Would do it little, again. Would recommend. A little wet. Four point yeah. five stars <laughs> in weather. <Yeah>. Moths. <laughs> Friends. Okay. Is it what what is this? Is this a just a tip time? It is just the tip, and oh. I'm sorry to disappoint everyone for like the third episode in a row where you're not going to get just the tip from Chrissy. You're going to get it from That's me. Okay. Linked in our show notes is a story from the folks over at Notorious.com. It was a classic car, a 1947 Suburban. They're out taking it out for a cruise. The brakes fail. I question their actions after this point, but I can see how they got there. So while the brakes fail, the driver of the car, she freaks out. She calls the cops. I'm running red lights. I can't stop my car. Please, someone come help me. A California police cruiser gets in front of the 1947 Suburban and in very much old chips TV show fashion, uses their car to slow the Suburban to a safe stop. Everyone was fine, but that's not the tip. The tip is, okay, if your brakes fail, maybe don't be on your phone. But when was the last time you checked the brakes on your fun car, on your tow pig, uh, or your street legal race car? Maybe the track is not the place to do that. Maybe you don't want to take it out and run around the block before you've checked the fluid, checked the brakes, checked the calipers, make sure they're not seasoned. Just the car that you don't drive on the regular, get out there, do a visual inspection, do a mechanical inspection before you put that car on the road. What's going to stop you? You better know, because you may not have a good cop with a sense of nobility that will put their big giant Ford Explorer in front of you and slow you to a safe stop. It might be a tree, concrete barrier, or a carload of nuns and orphans that you just don't want to hit. So if you haven't driven a car in a while. 
having a backup plan. Understand that gears can slow you down, as can parking brakes, as can if you really need to rub a wheel against a curb, something like that. That'll slow you down. Like these are other options as opposed to just help, help. And help. worst case, in an automatic transmission, <clears throat> just shut the car off. Turn yeah. the key. Kill it. Yeah. All right. It will be ugly mechanically, but it will yeah. not be a smashed yeah, car or a smashed car into another car. Right. To somebody else. Yeah. Um, it's in my color, but I refuse to take it. Do we know what we're talking about next week? We sure do. We talked about Colorado. Now we can talk about New Jersey. So come back faithfully for the New Jersey hangover show next week. Yep. Yes. Thanks because the wheel of the everybody. sky keeps turning. It does. Ah, more of that to come. We hope yes. you enjoyed this week's edition of everyone say. racers there's your music you we also hope now. you will join us in the world of driving racing and building because everyone can be a racer even you if you enjoyed this podcast subscribe totally free then go to itunes and give us a five-star rating even if you didn't like us at all give us five stars and tell us why we will absolutely read that on the show if you have any questions or show ideas drop us a comment on our facebook page everyone racers or email us everyone.racers at gmail.com you can still text us 484-243-0455. Mental loves to see pictures of your junk. Find us on Instagram and Twitter at everyone racers or everyone dot racers, really. YouTube and Facebook, everyone racers, even Reddit slash DNR. Thanks again. And until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless it's just pouring rain, then keep the side that drops the rainbow water down.